Okay. Okay, so here we are. We're going to do this as a sample problem to think about uh, scent. So here we go. So here's scent on her, I didn't mean to make it like a bobblehead thing, on her snowboard. And here's the avalanche. Oh, shit. Here it comes, right? And it's coming that way. All right. This will get to some real physics in a minute. So what's going to happen? Right now, scent is just going at her initial velocity. Right? She's going along. The avalanche is behind her. Nothing's happening. And then the avalanche is going to push her. A oh, big avalanche. Here's scent right on the edge of it. Right? Uh, so that there's a force of the avalanche on scent. Right? And we know what forces do. They accelerate things. So her velocity is a little bit bigger. And then, eventually, then the avalanche dies down. Right? It sort of falls down. And now scent is going V final, much faster. Oh, God. Right? And here's the rock. Oh, no, she's going to hit the rock. But don't worry, she'll teleport. And she'll be back in her bedroom. It'll be fine. Okay? So what we have is the avalanche pushes scent with force F for time delta T. So one thing that happens in these collision or interaction kind of problems is there's always a time involved, a delta T. How long did the interaction take place? Uh, pushes sent. Um, with force F for time delta T from VI to VF, right? That's what we have here. So what we want to do is look at that in time and say, okay, there we go. Let's plot. You often want to think about this in these problems is the force versus time, right? So at first, Scent was going along, top bar, nothing's happening. She sees it behind her, but she can't speed up. And then, uh, then the avalanche hits her like that, pushes her for a while, and then it stops. Right? So this is the force of the avalanche on scent right there. OK. So what we know is this is constant force. So we can just use uh, this equation. We don't have a varying force because I plotted it. It's constant. I mean, it varies in time. It goes from 0, flat at 0, flat at maximum value, flat at 0. But if you just consider uh, delta t here, it's a constant force. Right? So we say then we could calculate j. Uh, which is equal to delta P, which is equal to F delta T. And you can see what's happening. F delta T is the area under this rectangle here. And you also know it's probably an area under a curve because that's what that is, right? The integral of F dt, if F is some function, is just the area under the F dt curve. Okay. So let's throw some numbers in. Here, I made some up. Let's see, it pushes her. So a, a problem won't say F is equal to this, right? It'll be words, right? Pushes sent with 300 newtons um, for five seconds, for five seconds, and she's 60 kilograms. It's probably bigger than that with all those gear on. Okay, so we want to know what is the impulse? So calculate the impulse. See if you can do it on your own. Maybe even get the vector part right. We'll do harder ones soon, I promise. Can you clarify what... So while you're working on that, let's clarify what J is. J is just the symbol that we call the impulse. Right? It's just, it's literally equal to delta P. So when you're doing a problem, you might forget to write it as J. You might just call it delta P. It's just for some reason, we gave delta P its own name and its own symbol. And it's J. That's all it is. Literally equal to delta P. All right, so if you're doing this one, you say, well, it's the force times the delta t. And therefore, it must be, um, is delta p like, is acceleration? No, it is literally delta p. If, if like j is not acceleration, j is just literally the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So here, let's look at it and see if we can figure it out. What is the impulse in this case? Okay, we don't do it in this problem, but in a little bit we will. Well, it's just uh, 300 newtons times 5 seconds. It's 1,500 newtons, or 1,500 uh, kilogram meters per second. Right? That is how much her momentum changed. Right? You can also see it in the units, right? So if impulse is F times delta T, that's newtons times seconds. That's kilogram meters per second squared times seconds. So it's kilogram meters per second. But that's just a momentum, right? Mass times V. Okay? So in this one, unfortunately, it would have been good 
Oh, no, but I can count. Though the next part is, what is her impulse? And also, how much does she speed up? Was the other part. Maybe this will help. Did she speed up in meters per second? Okay, think about that for a second. See what you get. How? So, you know, she had some initial velocity, say, but how much faster was she going after the avalanche was done, but before she teleported to her bedroom? I would have to say it's 1,500 equals delta P, right? So that's uh, the mass times delta V. If it's mass times velocity here, right? So here her initial PI is her mass times VI. We're in one dimension, so I'll leave the vector stuff off. And here PF is that same mass times VF. Then you can see the delta P, P final minus P initial, equals what? Mass times V final minus mass times V initial equals mass times final minus initial, delta V. So delta P equals mass times delta V. And delta P is the impulse, right? So it's basically just 1,500 divided by uh, her uh, mass would be the delta V. Her mass was 60, so delta V. So I got what? 225 meters per second. So that's pretty fast. Unrealistic numbers. Sorry, I'm not a writer, so you know, I can't. Uh, delta V is 25 meters per second. That's about fast, uh, over fast as twice, fast as twice. Twice as fast as like a world-class sprinter doing the 100 meters. 